Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Blue Maxima and I'm here taking a look at Tokyo Tattoo Girls. Yes, a lot of people were wondering just what the fucking hell this game was when NIS America announced it for localization and even with the bloody like launch trailer they put out, it still didn't make that much sense because they showed like half a second of the game's actual quote unquote gameplay. So I'm here to show you just why this game is a giant pile. No, really. I, I, I honestly don't know what the deal is with this game. I don't know why they picked this game to localize. I don't know why they're releasing it right next to Demon Gaze 2. I don't know what the fuck's going on. So you can go to the configuration menu, but there's really nothing here. It's just volume sliders. That's literally it. There's nothing else to actually talk about here. Now there's... Something else I want to point out to you as well, by the way. The game is laggy. Like, exceedingly laggy. Everything feels really slow to respond, and you can notice in certain moving elements that the game's frame rate is horrendously slow. There is also a gallery that you can access, which is separate between all the different characters, which is a little odd. I'm guessing there's different CG art for every one of the characters. And you can see if we come to one of these one of the victory pictures, but for some reason I don't actually have all of them despite the fact that I've actually finished the game. Yes, you can beat this game in about an hour. No, I'm not kidding. You can... They give you a lot of trophies for beating the entire game with every character on every difficulty. Don't fucking bother. We'll go start a new game. I'm gonna skip the Initial cutscene that tells you the story of the game because there's no point to it. There is literally no story to this game other than you are a girl trying to take over Tokyo, more or less. That's pretty much the entire plot. You can pick between six characters, but the only real difference between them outside of their personalities and their abilities is a little bit of an extra benefit. I think this girl here, Hachui, that's probably not how you pronounce that. Yeah, early game advantage. This will work very well for me. So we'll pick OK. You've got four difficulties, but these two are locked off. I assume, actually, we can actually confirm this. If I come over here to Tachikawa, who I beat the game with just now, I can see... Huh. I don't actually get to pick the difficulty. That's really weird. I wonder what that's about. Whatever. We'll come back over here and we'll pick Hachikoi. H Hachioji. Never mind. I can't read. We will... Oh, right. No, I have to pick OK before the difficulty. Right. Let's go back again. Brain, work with me. Now, if I hit OK here... Yeah, now I can go to hard difficulty because I've beaten it on normal difficulty with her. Again, we're not going to do that. We're just going to go play on normal. No real point in doing anything else in all honesty. Tap OK, pick normal. You get, you can change your clan name, but we're not going to bother. I don't think there's any point to it. Store items in inventory headquarters. What's this about? Oh, increase in racketeers. Okay. Alright, so you get bonus items when you finish the game that change things a little bit, but trust me, don't bother. So, let's hit OK and get started, shall we? There's going to be a voiced scene, which I'm just going to... I'm going to let you listen to the first few lines, and then I'm just going to skip through the rest of it, because I really can't bother with listening to it for too long. The... Voices are not particularly great, and they just get kind of grating to listen to. So the basic plot is thus. Tokyo is surrounded by a big wire fence because there's some weird thing going on where girls are suddenly getting tattoos to make them into powerful beings. And you meet up with one of the girls in question, and you get to take on the syndicate, which is basically the government of the Tokyo's 23 wards. And you've got to try and take all the wards down one by one. You want to know how you take down all the wards? Well, let's just skip through this bloody text cutscene we got going on here. And we can learn for ourselves. They'll probably... Yep, there's the tutorial prompt. Let's not do that because the tutorial in this game is fucking useless. You are literally better off feeling around for how the game works. I don't feel like it gave me a good idea of what I was doing at all. So... We have to pick an area to start off with at the beginning. We might as well pick Oda. Just because it means the spread will be slightly slower. If you pick a, a, um, a ward in the middle of the place, it won't do you very good. So, 
here's the general idea. You have money to start off with, and this money can be used for a few different things. You can use it to increase your clanswomen in a ward. You can use it to decrease an alert, get some extra honor, which is basically your health bar. Recruit punks, which are part of your... Actually, here's a better idea. We should pause the game right now. So, every turn, which is basically a day, and which happens in a few seconds on regular time, and every second or so in fast forward time, you get protection money. You can use this protection money to do things for your wards. And, as I said, there are some things you can already do, like recruit some clanswomen, recruit punks, uh, get a small increase in honor, which, as I say, is your health bar. Uh, decrease your alert in a ward, which is very useful to do, because that is the main way you lose health in this game. You can also press the R button to access some other ones, including get information about your partner and a ward clan's boss. This is slightly useful, because it means it might give you a lot, a decent idea of what the best way to increase your honor meter after you've lost a bit of it. You can also buy these dice up here to go gambling to increase your odds, but... I haven't, I haven't bothered with gambling ever since I started the game, because money just rolls in after a certain point. There is one other thing you can do with your money, which I recommend you do right off the bat if you do buy this piece of shit. You press that purple button thing in the bottom right, and it takes you to your HQ screen. And while there's not that much here that's useful to look at, you can press the tattoo button, and you'll be taken to the tattoo screen. And here's the basic drill. You have certain tattoos that you can get. However, it seems to me that you get basically the same five tattoos on each side. And these five tattoos will increase your charisma or your threat. And when you increase your charisma or your threat, you make yourself slightly more... Oh, uh, no, I guess it's not the same set of tattoos. That's interesting. But you don't get the same set of tattoos on both. But when you buy some of these tattoos... You use them as extra little... What's the word? You use them as little extra bonuses for overtaking wards. You saw that I started on one ward. Now, we go back out and we resume time. Notably, the loading times in this game are a massive pain in the ass. So now that time's resumed, you can see that slowly, every turn, we slowly gain more disciples in an area. Eventually, we will also raid other territories and start getting them for our own. This is completely and utterly random. No, I'm not kidding. For some reason, they decided in a strategy game, they felt the need for the majority of the strategy to be completely random based on your girl's personality. Now, this might actually work if you can feel the... If you can feel the game's idea of... If basically, it's kind of like playing one of those really old and really difficult point-and-click adventure games. Where the logic behind everything seemingly makes no sense. If you are willing to do that from the very beginning in this game. And figure out what the girl's going to do based purely on the slight hints of personality that they give you. You'll have fun. But for the 99% of you who can't do that because this game's logic is a bit weird... You're not going to be able to do that. You'll... The first time you'll drop into this game, you will try and grab money that's being dropped in by these briefcases. You'll get money every day. And you'll just spread around slowly. And eventually, you'll start getting into high threat. Let's fast forward time a bit by using the shoulder buttons. You can also tap on the screen up there. Eventually, you'll start getting enough disciples to get into clan wars. And clan wars are really fucking annoying because they seem as random as everything else. Once a, a area starts going red, that means the pressure is on for the clan war. The, or the turf war. It's called something like that. And once you start the turf war, again, it's entirely random. Like, here we go. We've gone red. So if we leave this on red for too long, we'll eventually get into a clan war. However, we can spend money in order to lower the pressure on the place. We can also... We have also started spreading out. So we have to just continually spin plates, more or less. Use our money and our resources to as much 
of an efficient advantage as possible because there is really nothing in this game resembling strategy outside of that. It's literally just trying to find a way to spin all these plays as soon as possible because eventually you will have invaded every single territory on this map bar none. You will simply have way too much stuff to do and way too little time to do it in because you will eventually start getting tons of territories go red. And when they go red, that means they're close to having a fight. Now, the majority of the time, when this boils over and you get this little red siren thing, it will eventually mean something along the lines of, you suck, you are going to lose a little bit of health because we feel like it. That's pretty much exactly what it means. And that's it. Like, that is seriously it about... Is that... that is it just me or is that Guan Yu? No, that wouldn't be. We're in Japan. But yeah, as I was saying, eventually everything goes red and you start getting into turf wars. However, actually getting into a turf war is entirely random. For some reason, for some reason that I just cannot get my head around, you end up in a position where sometimes you'll press on the siren to try and initiate a turf war, but it just won't happen. And the game doesn't tell you why. Sometimes you'll just outright lose health, and sometimes you won't even... Sometimes you'll go into a fight, and when you get into that fight, you will... When you get into that fight, you'll win it, and you won't lose any health at all. You'll actually get a bit of extra money out of it. The game does not separate in any way whatsoever what the difference is between you failing to have a situation under control, and you not failing to have a situation under control and actually going into a turf war. There doesn't seem to be any difference in the two whatsoever. And I really don't know what the deal is. You literally feel like you're just grasping at straws the entire time. Because the game even says it itself, everything that you do... Everything that you do in this game is almost entirely random. I don't know what the deal is, but... Your AI character just does things for you, and it seems completely and utterly random. I really don't know what the deal is. So, you don't really know exactly where the most effective way to spread your abilities or use your tattoos is, because you never know what you're going to run into next, because the spread is random. The only way that the game really... The only way that the game really helps you out with this... Is, oh, look, we get our first takeover. I'm gonna let you sit back and listen to this for just a little bit. Okay. Okay. <笑>自分の決めたコールを取るものです。自分の決めたコールを引くのは許しんじゃないですか。ほら。私のことをご存知。うまいこと客を丸め込んでるって聞いてるよ。うん。そうなの。で、あなたはどうして連合に構想を
Where best to use your abilities, try and spin the plates of all your territories going hostile to you as best as you can. Mainly because some of these abilities have cooldown times. And hope that you don't have enough territories go red over a significant period enough of time to drain your health far enough. The game feels super random because of this. Like, it feels really, really random. As I said before, you don't get any sort of... You don't get any sort of say over what you take over next, where you're going to send troops, or anything like that. It's just watching these little... Oh, great, another one of these. I literally just skipped through these because it takes me too long to... Bloody... Oh, yeah, this lady. Sometimes you can tell what they want by listening to these conversations here. But, as you can see, I'm having terrible luck with that at the moment. But, yeah. The game basically has no strategy whatsoever. They call it a strategy game, but it's not really a strategy game. It's literally just about spinning plates. Use your money in the best ways possible. Sometimes you'll be a decent enough time to buy tattoos. Sometimes you'll want to be using your special abilities. All the different characters have special abilities. Like, for example, the girl I used to beat the game originally had a bunch of money that helped... Um, a bunch of abilities that helped to make money. This girl here is good on defense. So I can actually use this ability down here. Decreased chance of turf wars in a ward for 15 days. So this will actually help us out a bit. Because it'll give me a little bit of time to buy, uh, buy up a more stronger force. But yeah, as you can see, I've got three territories going red already. I can't possibly... I can't possibly deal with all of these at once. Not without spending all my money, so I have to lose honor eventually. Unless the game randomly decides to let me do a turf war, in which case I'll probably win because I outnumber pretty much everybody except like that territory right there. See, there's the si siren. For some reason that didn't work, and I don't know why. What about this siren up here? Nope. Nope. I just lost health. I just lost health for all of them. And it's completely random. I honestly have no idea what the influence is for these territories to go into actual turf wars. We'll see if we can actually see a turf war. It's literally just a screen. But we'll see if we can see an actual turf war. We're going to have another takeover happen very shortly though. So yeah, there we go. Told you. There's no strategy, there's no... There's nothing interesting, really. Not in the... Oh yeah, I actually got good. That's kind of nice, but yeah. You can't even skip these. You have to just mash X through them, and sometimes that results in you pressing X on an option, and you just have to hope that you got the right option. The writing isn't very good either. Just FYI. Pretty typical, nice and work. Yeah, gained 300 PM and I got 3% of my honor meter back. Which to be fair, in this game where you can lose like 5% to one or two well-timed raids, trust me, that's not much. Five, okay, keep these all off my back for a while. Immediately get a fourth one down here. I'm gonna go buy tattoos because I think tattoos might have something to do with whether or not you'll just outright lose honor in a particular territory, but I have no idea. I, I really don't. As I said, the tutorial in this game is absolutely goddamn useless, so it really doesn't help. You do get extra... You do get extra abilities once you have a certain amount of tattoos. Like, you see that I got an extra tattoo there. I need to raise my charisma a little. I need to... Yeah, I really do need to increase it a little. Uh, small increase in charisma, no thanks. Increase in charisma, small increase in... Alright, I'll just take an increase. Oh, fuck, I'll buy that one too. Charisma and threat, and there are also, like, little... There are also, like, little, um... Things. Like, uh... Attributes, that's the word. Attributes that every area has. So if you're having trouble taking over a specific area, you can buy the tattoos. That'll help out a little bit. But the 
it, it, it isn't as effective as you might think. But anyway, I'm going to go gambling just to show you what that's like. So these will show up from time to time. I've played this twice and I lost immediately. So yeah, it's a gambling den. I have, I've gone through this cutscene before. I can explain the rules to this. So, both of you roll a die, and basically what you have to do is get two doubles, and then the third dice will be your score. So, now that I, now I roll the dice, I have a score of two. That's not, that's not good enough to win, unfortunately. You can only play this game three times every time you come here, and it does cost you money, so I haven't bothered. The first two times I came here, I lost immediately because they rolled just that good. It's really quite something, I tell ya. But yeah, you can buy those extra dice abilities in order to... You can buy those extra dice abilities in order to, um... You know, in order to actually win a gambling when it does come up. But you usually want to spend all your money on something else. Re recruit a small number of clans women in all wards for 10 days. That's actually quite useful. So basically this is it. You try and keep your health high enough for as long as you can. Then you just slowly go through the motions of recruiting all 23 of these... These different women. And there's no fun in it. It is legitimately a really boring game. There's nothing in the way of strategy at all. It, as, I, as I've said multiple times in this recording, it's literally just spinning plates. More or less. I don't feel like I'm really taking everything over. I feel like I'm just along for the ride. More or less. And I don't like it. I, I think it's a really boring game. Because this is, most of this is out of my control, and I do not like it, to say the least. It just feels so random. I feel like I can't really do anything to... I, I don't know what I'm doing to help, and the game does not help me fi um, to... The game does not help me to figure it out. Oh, we conquered another territory! Awesome! Now I get to sit through another one of these loading screens, another one of these... Jewels that I always win and I I just I don't care. I really don't care. What I want to know is why they picked this game. Why did NIS America pick this game of all games to bring out over here? Why didn't they choose something like the Sengoku Hime series if they wanted something like this? Actual strategy gameplay, like a, a sort of Japanese or, you know, um, Chinese theme if you want one or the other. Uh, and, like, you know, girls. Girls, girls, girls. They're all girls in those games for the most part. If they wanted a game like this, why didn't they pick one of them? But, see, look at that. I just got three territories go red all at the same time after already calming down two. There's nothing I can do about this. It's... It's kind of unbelievable, actually. Also, small increase in honor. Yeah, it's absolutely tiny. Like, I just... I just lost it. I just lost it immediately from two territories going siren mode. There seriously is something that will actually prevent you from losing health, but it seems so random. And the game doesn't tell you what the difference is. So, yeah. yeah. I think I can't be trapped here was the long, the long choice, the wrong choice. Let's see. Nope. We just immediately get dumped into it. 
You know what? As soon as this one is over, I'm done. I've said everything I have to say. It's overly random. It feels like it has no real strategy whatsoever. It just feels like you're trying to spin plates while stuff just randomly rains shit on you. It's no fun. It has no real strategy whatsoever. It just feels like watching numbers and the game's technical performance is actually terrible. The animations are laggy. The UI is laggy. Everything is laggy. It's just dumb. And I don't like it. No point to it whatsoever. If it's anything less than like two bucks when it comes out. I don't even know what how expensive it's going to be. But anything above two bucks is too expensive for a game like this. I'm done. I'm absolutely done. You've literally seen half the game. Like, hang on. Close. Oh, for fuck's sake. Oh, Jesus wept. This does happen a lot. What did I tell you? I've, I've had some horrible luck picking these fucking choices today, I swear to god. Like seriously, 300 bucks to find out what the right, right response might be in these little chat sessions here. That's actually a fair amount of money in the early game, and by the late game you probably... Probably don't even need it anyway, because you've got most of the territories. So, you can afford to spend the small amount of money it would take to keep the three or four territories that would need... The, uh, the pressure going down to... You, you could afford to spend it on them to keep the pressure down anyway, so you wouldn't need to worry about recovering your honor. No, it's just dumb. It's a dumb, boring, painful excuse for a strategy game, and I will not have it. Do not bother. There's a reason why they didn't show you the actual gameplay in the trailer. It's because the actual ga gameplay in the trailer is fucking terrible. I would have taken a System Soft Alpha game over this any day of the goddamn year. This has been Blue Maxima, and I will see you all next time.